in this lesson, we're going to use the unit circle to problem solve on the coordinate plane. So let's take a look at this problem. A dent in the rim of a bicycle wheel is at negative 5, 6 when represented on a graph. What is the sign value at this point? So here's our wheel. And we're going to plot the point negative 5, 6. So I'm going to go over one. Oh, I'm going to estimate it to be about here. So that means that this length here is negative 5. And this length here is 6. So there's my point. And we want the sine value. So remember what sine is, what the ratio would be for sine. So we have this mnemonic device that we can use to remember the ratios for the trig functions. And it's so ka toa. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Sine of our angle, which we'll call theta, is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So now let's look at this, because we don't have an angle yet, right? But we're going to connect that point, negative 5, 6. We're going to connect it back to the origin. And this is the angle that we're looking at. And let me write the other leg of the triangle in. So I've got two legs. One is negative 5. Well, actually, the length would be 5. And the other one is 6. And I need to find the hypotenuse because in order to write the sine of this, I need to know the side that's opposite my angle theta and the hypotenuse of the triangle. So to find it, I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem. And I'm going to label my hypotenuse C. And Pythagorean theorem says that if you square one of the legs and then you add it to the other leg squared, it equals the hypotenuse squared. So I have my two legs. I have a, an xy coordinate value of negative 5 and then a value of 6. So I would have negative 5 squared plus 6 squared equals c squared. And that's 25 plus 36 equals c squared. And that's 61 equals c squared. So that means that c is the square root of 61. OK, so now I'm almost there. I come back up here, and I'm going to fill in. So the opposite side from my angle would be, that would be the opposite one. So that would be 6. And notice that it's the x value, I'm sorry, the y value of my point over the hypotenuse, which is square root of 61. Now, if you needed a decimal approximation, you could get that here, and you'd be done. If instead it needs to be written in radical form, then we have a little bit more work to do because we can't leave a radical in the denominator. So to rationalize this, we have to multiply the top and the bottom by that square root, because remember, a square root times a square root will, it's, it's, we're squaring a square root, so we're doing an inverse, which means it cancels it out. So on the top, we'll have 6 root 61. On the bottom, we'll just have 61. And that would be the exact value, if you needed the exact value. But again, if you needed a decimal approximation, then you can just find a decimal approximation for the square root and then an approximation for the division problem here for the quotient. All right, so let's talk about cosine and sine. In the last two problems, we saw that sine, we know is, well, let's start with cosine, is adjacent over hypotenuse. We also saw in the problem right before this that that correlates to the x value over the hypotenuse. Sine, on the other hand, coordinates to the y value over the hypotenuse. And tangent is the y value over the x value. 
In other words, tangent is sine over cosine. Because in this case, we don't need to worry about the denominator because we know that sine, this has a denominator and this has a denominator. But their denominators are going to be the same because they're in the same circle, so the same hypotenuse. So tangent is sine over cosine, and since we're not worried about the denominators, we can just say the y value over the x value of the point where that angle terminates on the circle. So for cosine, if we want to know where cosine is positive, the hypotenuse is always positive. So we just have to look and see where our numerator is positive. And our numerator is the x value. X values are positive anytime we go this way, right? Which would mean any point in here along this part of the circle or any point along this part of the circle. So cosine is positive in quadrants 1 and 4. Because remember, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4. They're numbered that way. So let's look at sine. Where is sine positive? Well, that's, sine is going to be positive anytime my y value is positive. So that means anytime I move up, sine is positive. So that's going to happen in these two quadrants, anywhere in here along this part of the circle or along this part of the circle. So sine is positive in quadrants 1 and 2. Where is tangent positive? Well, tangent is, remember, the y value over the x value. So if both of those values are positive, tangent's going to be positive. What if both of those values are negative? Well, a negative divided by a negative is positive. So it's also going to be, tangent will also be positive where both of these values are negative, which would be here, right? So x and y are positive here. x and y are both negative here. So those are the two quadrants where tangent is positive. OK. when theta equals 4 pi over 3, what are the reference angle and the sine values for sine, cosine, and tangent? Okay, so when theta is 4 pi over 3, so let's first figure out where that is. Let's look at multiples of pi over 3. Well, pi over 3 means divide pi by 3, just like what it looks like. It means pi divided by 3. Remember that pi is the same thing as 180 degrees. So 180 degrees divided by 3 would give us 60 degrees. So that's where pi over 3 is. So I'm going to draw this in. It's about here. This would be pi over 3. All right, so what's the next one? The next multiple of pi over 3 would be 2 pi over 3. And the next multiple of 60 would be 120. So this is where 2 pi over 3 would be. Let's look at the next multiple, 3 pi over 3. Well, 3 pi over 3 is the next multiple of 60, but you can also see that the 3s would cancel, and you just get pi. So this is 3 pi over 3. And then lastly, the one we're looking for, 4 pi over 3, would be the next multiple of 60, which would be 240 degrees. And that would be right about here. So that's 4 pi over 3. So there's the point that we're looking for. So first off, what is the reference angle? The reference angle is the angle that we used in the first quadrant to find all of the other ones. So in this case, it would be pi over 3. If we were given 5 pi over 6, then we would have started with pi over 6 and looked at multiples of that. But we were given 4 pi over 3, so we started with pi over 3 and then looked at all the multiples. That's our reference angle. The reference angle is always in the first quadrant. OK, so now it says, what are the sine values for sine, cosine, and tangent? Well, to get to this point, 
I would have to travel to the left and then down, which means that my x would be negative and my y would be negative. So in looking at the cosine and sine values, since my x is negative, that means my cosine is negative, so I'm just going to write less than zero. Since I went down, my y is negative, so that means my sine is negative. And since tangent, remember, is sine over cosine, that means we've got a negative divided by a negative. So tangent for this problem would be positive. All right, last one. If cosine is negative 2 over 5 and the tangent is positive, what is the value of sine theta? Okay. So cosine, remember, is adjacent over hypotenuse, or you can think of it as the x value over the hypotenuse. And in this case, we're told that it's negative 2 fifths, negative 2 fifths. Notice that I put the negative with the 2, because if you remember, we were talking about the hypotenuse, it's always positive. So that negative is going to go with the 2, which means my x value is negative 2. Now, once I start at 0, 0, and I go 2 to the left, my next question is, do I go up here to plot my point? Or do I go down here to plot my point? And the only way that I know that is by looking at the value of the tangent. Because the tangent is positive, remember, tangent is only positive when you're either in this quadrant, because it's positive divided by a positive, or you're in this quadrant, because it's negative divided by a negative. So that means I must be in quadrant 3. So that's how I'm going to plot it. I'm going to go 2 to the left, and notice I'm not going 5 down, because remember, 5 is my hypotenuse. Okay, so this is negative 2. This, I don't know, I'm going to label it B, and my hypotenuse, which I would normally label C, is a value I do know, that's 5. So I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem again to find my missing side. So A squared plus b squared equals c squared. My a is negative 2. I don't know b squared. And my c squared is 5 squared. So I'll have 4 plus b squared equals 25. And then I subtract 4 from both sides. So b squared equals 21. And b equals square root of 21. OK, so now my job is to find the sign. I'm sorry, the cosine, right? The cosine is what I was originally, no, that's what I was given. I have to find the sine. So theta is going to be right here. And sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Or you can think of that as the y value over the hypotenuse. And my y value is what I just found here, right? This is my y value is how far down I have to go to plot my point. This is that number right here. So my sine is the square root of 21 over my hypotenuse, which I had, I was given that, is 5. So that's the sine of my angle theta. And really, it should say sine theta equals.